Hi, welcome to the Israel First television program with myself, Nat uh, uh, Martin Blackham, with my wife, Natalie Blackham. Great to have you with us. Thank you so much for joining us today with a program from Israel. We look at the news, we look at features from Israel, and uh, we bring you all the events that are happening there. Uh, and uh, great, to, uh, we welcome you today, don't we, Natalie? We mm -hmm. welcome everybody. If you're watching uh, live, because we're, we're going out live as we speak, we're going out on the YouTube channel, then please do uh, send us your comments. You can do that on the comments box. And uh, if you're watching at a later date, you can still contact us and we'd love to hear from you. Our email address is info at israelfirst.org. Now, the big news in Israel is that, uh, is obviously with the virus, that's the big thing everybody's talking about all around the world. So it's, uh, it's very important that you know what's happening in Israel. And Natalie, the infection rate in Israel falls to the lowest level in three months. The number of seriously ill COVID-19 patients continues to fall as infection rates plummet to three-month low. A total of 3,055 new cases of the coronavirus were diagnosed in Israel Tuesday uh, this week, according to data released by the Health Ministry uh, Wednesday morning. The total number of cases diagnosed since the pandemic began now stands at 809,870, including 38,577 active cases. Of those, 1,073 patients are being treated in hospitals, including 653 in serious condition, with a total of 215 on respirators. The number of seriously ill patients fell sharply this week from 714 on Monday to 690 on Tuesday. The number, um, the infection rate continues to fall with the percentage of tests returning positive declining to 3.3%, uh, down from 3.9%. And I want to say hello to uh, Vivica, Vi Vivica from Norway. Sorry if I don't say your name exactly properly. And also from Mike. Wow, from Australia. So we have Sweden and Australia. Amazing. Uh, Norway. Norway so, and Australia. Oh, Norway. Yeah. Are you sure? Was it Norway no, you no, said? No, no, Sweden. Sweden, Sweden, Sweden. Sweden. I recognize the flag. <laughs> <laughs> Great to have you with us. And you know, that's, uh, thank you so much uh, for joining us today uh, from Sweden and from Australia. If you can tell us uh, what's happening uh, in your area as well, that, that would be really great. Uh, mm -hmm. And we can, if you can do it live, we try and fit that in as well. The number of coronavirus related fatalities measured by the number of deaths in Israel uh, 30 days or less following a positive COVID test now stands at 5936, including 10 deaths reported on Tuesday. Well, the other kind of news which uh, we've been mentioning and uh, is big, is, it's a serious issue in Israel, is the new Green Pass, the new Green Passport, uh, the vaccination passport or whatever you want to call it. Uh, and Israelis have reacted harshly to the new green passport regulations for restaurants, in particular restaurants. Mm -hmm. Rest because, um, like all of you, uh, everything has been closed and shut down, particularly restaurants. And it's Five something months we've been in lockdown right? wow. all together. Wow. Five months. And uh, restaurants is something that is very dear to the heart of uh, Israelis, particularly cafes. They like to, like the French, sit outside in the sun with the coffee. And so restaurants are very important in Israeli society. And restaurants reopened in Israel, Natalie, on Sunday exclusively though to those with the green pass which is only available to vaccinated citizens many israelis say that restaurants shouldn't comply with the regulations allowing sit-down dining only to people who can show they have been vaccinated with the government's green pass israelis made their feelings known on the tasty vegan facebook group whose 35,000 members normally talk about information on vegan products vegan restaurants etc and uh, Eliv Yahav, who owns the Tel Aviv restaurant Goodness, this is a vegan restaurant, have posted earlier that she planned to adhere to the green passport directives on access. In other words, you can't get access to the Goodness restaurant without having the green passport, which is on your phone, by the way. Uh, many former customers reacted strongly to this extremely unfair segregation. What? will happen after what you've written is that people who really care will not come to eat. This is one 
former customer at your place and will remember you badly forever. Even if you erase everything now, I've taken a picture to remember never to eat at your restaurant. Another vowed, I'm finished with goodness. If there's anyone who knows how to do a consumer boycott, it's uh, vegans. Uh, other, we haven't fe featured vegan people, so there you are. Mm -hmm. If you're a vegan, we are featuring you on the Israel First program. Others accused Jahab, this is the owner of the restaurant, of fas fascism and compared it with the Nazi collaborators during World War II. It's good that you've joined the list of businesses that surrendered to fascist dictates. Soon the green nonsense will end, but you'll be left with its stain the rest of your life. Now, uh, one of the activists uh, who's been working very hard to make... Uh, to make it known that not every Israeli is in favour of vaccines is Naim Kainan. And, sh and she makes no apologies for the offensive against restaurant owners. She has staged rallies with hundreds of others over the last few months every Thursday at Hibima Square, that's in Tel Aviv, claiming that the pandemic threat has been blown out of all proportion and the government's measures to fight it infringe on the right to privacy. And we've talked about that, the importance of your, uh, having privacy. As I see it, anyone who can, can cooperates with this immoral law is abetting a crime. Small businesses which have been affected, uh, the ones most badly affected by the COVID crisis, need to say we won't cooperate, said Keenan. They can open as they normally would and then get fined. They can go to court and win. Le legality is on their side because we're talking about emergency regulations that, what, violate privacy rights. Keenan doesn't just limit her criticism to business owners. I don't understand how in the left that is supposed to be enlightened and democratic, they've murdered democracy and they have si been silenced by fear, overwhelmed by existential fear. She complained that the media had barely covered her protests against forced vaccination hotel quarantines, even though they have been drawn thousands of people. When they do cover it, she said, they call us delusional. Now, uh, she might be interested to know we've covered it today. So there you are. Uh, we've covered your, Keenan, we've covered your protests yeah. and we don't call you delusional. Uh, these are people who are uh, disagreeing with the, uh, the vaccine, majority. vaccine regulations. Now, or, or the forced vaccine coercion, or, or, or the whole gambit of everything that's going on. Uh, 80 Hadassah workers, this is another very important news story for you to know. Uh, 80 Hadassah workers, 80 hospital doctors, nurses, uh, medical staff have been uh, uh, sent home on unpaid leave for choosing not to have the COVID vaccine. That's uh, from the Hadassah Hospital. It's probably one of the most famous hospitals in Israel and they've all been sent home uh, and they've been furloughed without pay. So not only are they removed from the building, Natalie, but they can't, they're not even paid because they haven't been vaccinated uh, for whatever reason. Hadassah Hospital said the workers hadn't received permission not to be vaccinated. Oh, now you have to have permission not to be vaccinated, Natalie. I didn't know yeah. that. We have somebody from Sweden watching us all now, Yvonne. And she's in the Arctic Circle. Isn't it amazing? Ha Shalom to you. This is wonderful. You know, pass after our YouTube to people because we are giving you some news from here, from Israel, and it's very important what's happening. Yeah, I mean, there's things happening that have never happened before. Uh, and Hadassah Hospital, which is, a, you know, it's, always, it's got a great it's reputation the, before. Yes. Yeah. Now, it said last week, the Has Hadassah Hospital announced they would bar all unvaccinated workers from treating patients. The announcement came on the heels of a health ministry directive that's from the Israeli government that calls for unvaccinated staff students to be barred from working in certain departments. So the health ministry, Natalie, have said uh, doctors and nurses and medical staff can't work in certain departments, but they've taken it one step further. They can't even work in the building. Uh, really serious. Professor Nadav Davidovich, uh, a senior official in the Israeli Association of Public Health Physicians, said the Israeli's health ministry policy is not proportionate, claiming it could have problematic consequences. Um, and uh, he's got, he went on to say there's a shortage of healthcare workers, so it's not practical, he says. You see, this morning I was uh, in Mevaseret, which is close to Jerusalem, and I was close to a clinic where people are going, very a lot of activities. And, oh my gosh, it's, for me, it's so sad. It's like people going to the slaughter, having their vaccination. 
I mean, I know obviously people can make the choice, okay? But when we do the research and see that it's an experimental vaccine, but people don't know, you know, we go here, we go on Google, you can't find anything, you have to go on special uh, uh, engine, uh, search, search, search engine to be able to find something. We are also, okay, which is important, so we are also receiving some news directly from, from some people who are in, in a group who give us directly some news. And again, if you want to have that, uh, you have to ask us in, in info at israelfirst.org. Just send us a very quick email and we will give you some information how to receive the information because there is some information very important who are not passing, coming uh, through normal channel. But you need to know... But we've, so we've talked about this where um, the media isn't reporting what's happening. It's yeah. reporting an agenda. Yeah. Um, but the, I was watching something on Destar and Destar is speaking also very clearly about it and they've been boycotted. Uh, but this is very important. We, we need to be informed. Okay? Yeah, we have the right, all of us all around the world, we, we, are, we, are, we have the right to be informed of what's happening with this. And, and not only have we the right to be informed, but we've got the right to choose what to do. Yes, of course. But if you work at uh, Israel's National Lottery, you don't, Natalie. Israel's National Lottery, which is uh, these little booths that they have in um, uh, shopping malls, shopping centers, they have these small uh, places where they sell the lottery tickets. Lotto. Um, Israel's National Lottery is to fire staff, sack them who are not vaccinated against the virus. Mifol, this is all the news from this week. Mifol Harpas, chairman, says he has no problems facing consequences of implementing such a harsh measure, adding unvaccinated employees will first be put on unpaid leave and later terminated. Uh, this was announced on Wednesday. Uh, the chairman said that, uh, of this uh, company uh, said that, uh, I think his, uh, he used to work for the um, Prime Minister's office, he said, there's no question in my mind, all of our employees, without exception, who have been, uh, who have not been administered to the dose of the vaccine will be uh, put on unpaid lead and later terminated at the same time. Oh, this is just in, um, just in the news and it's all coming out. Tel Aviv votes to ban unvaccinated teachers. In other words, first of all, uh, we talked about doctors. Then we talked about staff working in these lo lottery booths. And restaurants. Now we're talking about, and restaurants you can't get access. Now we're talking about Tel Aviv uh, uh, schools. Tel Aviv votes to ban unvaccinated teachers from schools. Tel Aviv municipal, this is all this week, Tel Aviv municipality became the first in Israel to approve the measure, which from Sunday, this is this uh, coming up Sunday, will obligate all teaching staff at schools and kindergartens, as well as administrative workers, that's everybody, cleaners and the whole gambit, to present a green pass, the green passport, when they make entrance to the school. The city of Tel Aviv, uh, in an unprecedented move, decided to ban all vaccinated school and kindergarten teachers from entering education facilities from next week. The government in the past considered similar legislation but was fearful, thankfully, because of judicial issues and because of uh, a possible strike from the teachers' union. Tel Aviv therefore became the first city in the country to approve this extremely contentious measure. According to the decision starting Sunday, all staff administrative workers will have to present not a choice, have to present a green pass at the entrance to the facility. Now, we've talked about doctors, we've talked about lottery workers, we've talked about teachers, we've talked about getting access to restaurants. Now we're going to talk about rabbis. Rabbi David Satvi announces, and he's from the Jewish Zohar rabbinical organization, says we won't allow unvaccinated rabbis to conduct weddings. So we've gone from, who have we gone from, Natalie? We've gone from uh, everybody getting access to restaurants. Mm -hmm. uh, now it's, listen, the thing is, yeah, uh, there's some restaurants won't abide by the rules, some restaurants won't but know not, the rules, yeah, but, it, not, but this not, is the rule now. I know, but not only that, because you need to know that all the people who want to go to theatres and cinema and all of that, they need to show the green card, okay? So if you don't have the green pass, you can't wish will be on your phone, 
okay, you can go to these uh, places, social places. Now, uh, Rabbi David Satvi said, unvaccinated rabbis won't be allowed to conduct weddings. Uh, and the Zohar organization, which you may not have heard of, it's an Israeli organization with over 800 uh, religious Zionist Orthodox rabbis involved, which helps coordinate thousands of marriage ceremonies each year, with many officiated by volunteer rabbis organized by the organi organized by Zohar. Now, the Zohar senior rabbi has informed member rabbis that only officiants have been vaccinated, in other words, have the green pass, recovered from the virus, will be allowed to conduct the ceremonies or even meet the brides. Um, and the organization, which also facilitates premarital counseling, has asked that unvaccinated bridal counselors should not hold in-person meetings, Natalie. That, um, you know, that they are um, banning everybody who has not got the, the green pass. Now, this is rabbis. Good. I was thinking, are you going to speak about the, the new political party? Yes. You, you, you just beat me to it. I'll just grab my paper okay. and uh, we need to speak to you. Um, for those who pray, we need to pray for them. This is a very important um, political party. Israeli doctor, Dr. Aryeh Avi, who fa who's founded a political party called Rafa, R-A-P-E-H. Rafa. Rafa demands to see uh, the full Pfizer contract with Israeli government. He's founded this party. Um, which is saying people should have a choice, not that people shouldn't get vaccinated or they should, but that people should have the choice. And uh, he's running, the, we've got elections just coming up, by the way, which is also in the news. We're starting just now because of coronavirus, it's been very low key, this election, but we're just starting to see election posters go up in Israel. And uh, so they need your prayers. That's the Rafa party and in start, Israel. Yeah, and they started to vote today because there is Jews who live in different parts of the world and they, they have the right to vote. So they are voting and some New Zealand, Australia, you know, this country, they are already voting for bringing their vote uh, later on here in Israel. And um, the Rafa party have been uh, asking, they wrote to the um, health ministry regarding this, uh, the, uh, the uh, vaccination regulations and they've called it medical apartheid for millions of Israeli citizens. Uh, the Rafa party referred to the proposal by Health Minister Elderstein to use coercive methods of incentives and restrictions on millions of law-abiding Israelis to take the experimental, this is the thing we need to emphasize, Pfizer injection or become second-class citizens in their own country, Natalie. They continued Elderstein's in Increasingly extreme measures smacks of desperation and a willingness to take risks, including that of trampling on the inalienable uh, bodily autonomy of Israeli citizens in the attempt to claim victory over COVID-19 before the election. So in the middle of all of this, we've got an election and they're trying to rush everything through and uh, trying to make everything as quotation marks, normal quotes, quotation marks as possible. Because why? Because they want to be re-elected. We, the Rafa party, this is um, the doctor speaking, and the people of Israel demand to see the full version of the contract between Pfizer and the Israeli government. Ironically, it is Yuli Elderstein himself pursued and then imprisoned for three years in a Soviet jail as a prisoner of Zion proposing this extraordinary revocation of human rights. Absolutely unbelievable. Um, you know, it's one thing to, to encourage people to do something. It's one thing... Um, to help people to do something, but it's another thing when people can't work, they can't go to restaurants. Uh, this is very serious. Now, uh, obviously there are places of work where you can still go, and obviously there are restaurants you can still go, but this and is obviously you the can regulations. Do your, you can do your shopping, you can go to buy food, but there is certain things where you have a restriction. Uh, but you have to say also, like this party, um, they are so restricted, you can find almost anything on Google, you know, if you are doing search on them. Um, they can't advertise, it was very hard for them even to open a bank account for, their, for starting the party. I mean, there were so many hurdles that they had to jump over 
And uh, but they have results because there is some people who are not happy about this, this vaccine and their freedom, and uh, and they are fighting. But it's, it's very interesting. Again, if you want more information, please uh, write, write to us on to info at israelfirst.org and we'll give you more information uh, about these things if you want personally to receive some news. And if this, if the program is important to you, if uh the, the work that we're doing is significant and, uh, and you believe in it, then please do consider helping us. We, it's because of your support um, that we're able to bring these live programs from Jerusalem, bringing you news from Israel, bringing you what's happening on the ground um, on a regular basis. So please do consider that. If you'd like to make a donation or like to financially support us, then there's a, go to the website. There's a donate button. And all the information is there, but if you have any questions, then please email us or, or get in touch with us via the contact page uh, and we will help you now. Uh, Israeli law firm, uh, let me try and uh, get this, it's, uh, I think it's a Russian name, Such Avoloskvi and Son in Tel Aviv have written to the government uh, saying the COVID-19 vaccine and coercion is a serious breach of the Nuremberg Code regarding the prohibition of medical experiments on humans and without consent. And in particular, these are the points that they make. One, the long-term effects, uh, long effects of treatments are unknown. Nobody knows because it's an experimental vaccine what the long-term effects are. Two, human vaccines have never been given worldwide uh, using synthetic mRNA insertion. So again, We've got an experimental vaccine. We've got things in it that we've never been used before. Um, number three, on, on human, on, on humans, human. because Requi there has been done also on animals, and all the experiments has been done with the animals, or they are very sick, or they die. Uh, number three, it's important to know. Right. Number three, requirements of informed consent to a medical trial. That you know, it's important to tell people if you're involved in a medical trial, that they're involved in a trial, no, no. you know. But when they have the vaccine, they have the vaccine, they go, they have nothing, no paper in their hands, not, nothing. Right. Uh, there is no information other than go and get your jab. Yeah. Uh, if you get an invitation, and a lot of uh, the health funds have been putting pressure on people to make an appointment, contacting them, ringing them up, and um, they aren't given any information, they're just told to go. So it's like giving blood or something, you know, you, you're not told what is going to be used for or anything, just go to the place and do it. With no information, uh, nobody telling these, pe these Israeli citizens that it's experimental and nobody really knows what's going to happen. Uh, number four, transfer of government information regarding personal medical inf information of private Israeli citizens to a public company, Pfizer. In other words, they're giving out private information about Israeli citizens uh, to Pfizer. Uh, number five, Nuremberg Code mandates that the medical experiment should not be conducted when there is reason to believe the actual death or in injury will occur. Uh, the letter was addressed to Israeli Attorney General Avikei Mandelbit, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and Health Minister Yuli Elderstein. So, you know, this is very serious that um, they're having to write to the government about these things. And, um, so somebody is saying, Yvonne from uh, Sweden, say, as we have gotten vaccine shot in Sweden, we get the notice that we have to keep on distancing as health authorities aren't sure that the, di the different vaccine works. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, we're not, at the end of the day, we're not um, saying that, uh, you know, you have a choice, everyone has a choice to make. What we're saying is that there should be a freedom to make the choice. That's the, the very important key. And in Israel, we're seeing that freedom go out the window because there's so much pressure on people uh, to make uh, one choice. They don't have any, I mean, as we've just told you, you know, restaurants, may, as I say, not all restaurants, but some restaurants down in Tel Aviv are not allowing people. Mm -hmm. um, some companies, uh, Mobileye, uh, have said that they're not going to allow people to work there. So uh, I just want to say something also, like when we say we are going very soon to Passover, and Passover, you know, only 20% of the people were going out of Egypt. 
all the others, the 80%, they were happy to eat the cucumbers in Egypt. They were happy to be, even they were slaves, they were happy to have food from there. And only 20% went. And, and, you know, we have to look at the thing saying, wow, they went and they, they... No, but it's like some didn't want to, saying, what are you going to do? You are going to go in the wilderness and you don't know what's going to happen. You are going in the desert. No, us, we don't want to follow God. We don't want to do that because we don't trust uh, this Moses. And, and in one way, I can see now that it's, it's kind of the same. And, you know, I, w- I discovered something. Like, which is amazing. Listen to that. When in Psalm 29, there is a beautiful uh, passage where you speak about the voice of God and the voice of God can break the cedar of Le- Lebanon because the voice of God is so uh, powerful. OK, and so God has to bring the, the people or out of Egypt in the wilderness because he was going to give his Torah by his voice. And it needs to be in the wilderness. You know what the name wilderness in Hebrew is? Midbar. And you hear the name Davar. Davar is the word. So the word is given in the desert because it was so powerful that he needed to be in a very special place for his voice to come to us. And so it's like for me, like now we are going into Passover. We are going into this feast of freedom. Now, do we want freedom? Do we want to keep a met? A met is truth. Do we want to keep truth or do we want to have sheker? And we have to make a choice. We need to really know in our heart what are we standing for? It's, and uh, it's very important because, you know, there's, there's time is running out and people are having to make very quick decisions. But we which would... Is we, which we, is like for their body. Right. And we would say, do, don't make any decision until you've done a lot of research. Uh, and thought very carefully about it because there are a lot of concerning issues about this experimental vaccine. Now, uh, we've run out of time. It's great to be with you. Uh, Thank you so much for joining us today across the world from the Arctic Circle, from Australia and uh, from Sweden. We thank you so much for contacting us as well. Uh, Don't forget, you can visit the website www.israelfirst.org and remember the program that looks at the land, the people, and the language.